all the perspectives that we heard up here. We've already gotten quite a bit of the message out there to hear, but I guess I'll go ahead and go through it and God will bring it to completion by the Holy Spirit. Just be open to what the Lord's going to share with you tonight. And I feel like this is definitely a word for right now. And, and last night I actually sat down and put this message together and, and God just hit me with it like boom, real hard. And, and I, had to, I had to write it down real fast. And so we'll see how everything comes out. But I know it's directly from, from the Spirit of God. And so it's a message that's supposed to be going out right now. So it's going to be cool. It's going to be real cool. So... Again, just the idea that God gave me when I sat down to write this, I was actually driving home yesterday and he gave me kind of the, the basics of what I was going to be talking about, and, and God just gave me the word perspective, and our perspective is just the way we see the world, and each one of us is going to see the world through some perspective, okay? and, and sometimes those perspectives might be similar, sometimes, sometimes they might be different, and so each one of us sees the world through a lens, it's like you've got glasses on, but those glasses are all going to be different tints and different colors, and they're going to make the world appear different to you depending on what kind of glasses you have on. So it's like, we've got to find the right prescription and, and the way that the world is going to look right. And so, before I came to Christ, I, I had my own you know, prescription, I had my own lenses, my own viewpoint or perspective on the world around me. And basically that perspective was, it's like, okay, whatever feels right to me, is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to see the world through, like, my Americanized perspective, and, you know, the perspective of things that I'm hearing from the media, and the perspective of what feels good to me, and that's the way I'm going to see the world. I'm going to look at things and just say, okay, does this feel good to me? If so, then it must be okay. And, and my whole life growing up, I grew up in the church, and, yes? You just define modern day grace. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's basically the way it's it. on Facebook. Hey, if, it, if it feels right, then it must be right. Right? Wrong. No way, dude. So, so basically, growing up, I, I grew up in the church, and I grew up uh, saying the right things and doing all the right things, but there was never any true conversion. And since there was never any true conversion, the lens that I saw the world through never got changed. And the lens that I saw the world through didn't get changed until I was in college, and I really started just, just screwing up. And, and thankfully, I had at least some foundation that was set by my parents, who were really awesome, and they, they got me into church, and they did the things that they needed to do, but we're not saved by our parents, obviously. So, so they did all the right things, so none of this is anything that they did that was wrong at all. They're awesome, and they have, they have an awesome relationship with the Lord, too, but it was just me, and I hadn't gotten gotten a grip of it yet, of what I needed to do. So I went through some, some situations where I was like, man, I'm really falling away from where, based on what I've been taught, and what I know in my heart, I'm not at all where I need to be. And so the Lord really just grabbed my attention, and, and He shook me up, and He said, okay, basically in, in your life you need to do this and this and this, and, and get rid of these things permanently, and, and just lay everything down, and just, just accept me as your Savior, and then things are going to change, and that's exactly what happened. I basically laid everything down before the Lord. I, I got out of a relationship I didn't need to be in, just turned my eyes completely to God. Uh, he, he basically showed me what was going to happen, and, and it happened. He showed me that you know the next girl I was with was going to be, you know, the relationship was going to be good, it was going to be pure in his eyes, and it was going to be you know, the person that would become my wife, and that, you know, that would just lead into a lot of things, and so that's what brought me here, and, and so the Lord just did amazing things, but that was only when He grabbed my attention that I needed to really change my perspective on how I was seeing the world around me, um, because the world, through their perspective, the way they see joy, and this definitely seems true in the world today, they see joy in sin, and so when they're out doing these things, they receive like that, that temporary pleasure and happiness, and to them... That's what seems right. That's what seems good. So they leave those glasses on. That's the way they want to look at the world. But through the lens of Christ, we can look at sin and see that as being like this just devouring cancer that's going to pull us away from the Lord. We can see sin for what it truly is. So that's kind of the conversion that needs to take place. And when people look at the world without that lens that we see it through, that we see the world through the eyes of Christ, through eyes that have been purified and redeemed, the world... Uh, without Christ, there can only be lawlessness, and so we can only have law when we have 
Christ says he came to fulfill the law. And so, in our lives, we can only be fulfilled when we repent, place everything that we have before him, and allow him to just purify our eyes and change the way we're seeing the world. And so, I just want to kind of give a few examples of that tonight, of how our perspective, if our perspective truly is through Christ, that we really see the world completely differently than the way the world sees the world, if that makes sense. Because when we look out at the world, we see people like who are maybe homeless, or people who are going through a tough situation, people who are addicted to drugs, addicted to alcohol, whatever it might be. And the world, when they look at those people through their own eyes, their own perspective, they're going to just slap a label on those people, and I hear that so often. Or they'll look out and they'll just put a label on people like, oh, that guy's just a bum. That guy over there is just a loser. Uh, he's just a murderer. There's nothing that he can do to, to be better, to improve from where he is right now. And so they, they turn those people into just a word or just a noun or just an adjective. And that's all that person becomes to them, just like a number with no real meaning. But through the lens of Christ, we see that that person has been redeemed, or they could be redeemed. They haven't been yet, but they could be. We see them for the potential of what they could become through Christ. And so, through that lens of Christ, those people just become lost children then who need to be adopted into the family of Christ. And so, with that heart change, that changes the way we look at the world, and that should change our actions and the way we act towards people. When the world will hate people like this, that's where we need to love those people and be open towards them. And that's all because the Lord has transformed us and brought about a new perspective on these people. And so the scripture that the Lord gave me for that, which is Matthew 5, uh, verses 43 through 48, on the way that through the lens of Christ, how we need to see people in the world and the heart that we need to have for them. And so Matthew 5, verses 43 through 48 says... You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? You, therefore, must be perfect, as your Heavenly Father is perfect. And, and so where the world looks out, and they see people that maybe they label as their enemy, people that they label as, as bums or losers or people who are never going to make it, that's where we need to reach out and see those people by the potential that they have in the Lord, and to reach out to those people and to, to have a heart for them. And that's something that I'm able to actually share with my students as well, because they'll talk about seeing homeless people around and things like that. And that's where I get the opportunity to say, hey, have you ever taken the time to, to step back and really think about that person's life and, okay, how did they get into this situation? What happened in their life that caused them to lose their house, to lose their car, to lose their family? I said, you don't know. Maybe they just you know, had an unfortunate situation where they lost their job and then they couldn't find another one, even if they were trying hard to find one. It, it could be a, a scenario like that. You just don't know it. And we're just putting judgment on these people, like every one of them, you know, if, if they're homeless, they must be addicted to so-and-so, or, or this must have happened to them, they must be lazy. And the world tends to just slap labels on situations mm -hmm. and say, it's got to be this way, where through the eyes of Christ, we know that we can't just make some judgment and say, this person must be going through this situation. We just, we just pray for that person and love that person and know that if we're seeing them through the eyes of Christ, we really see them for the potential that they have and not for what we're seeing at the moment. And that's where we can see some of the most amazing transformations happen are when the Lord takes somebody that's in that situation and brings them up and redeems them and, and just sets them in a place where they've never been before. And that's awesome. Uh, another one, where the world looks out and they see events right now like Ebola going on, we've got natural disasters all over the place, we've got wars being fought all over the place. Uh, we can see right now, like whenever you watch the news or listen to the news, the world is just in a state of fear right now. And people are freaking out about Ebola, and because it, it, it could be a very serious thing. But when the world sees that, the initial reaction is just a fear and a panic, 
and to just, just freak out. And so that's what the world is doing right now. The world is freaking out. So they abandon their hope when they see things like this happening. But when we see these events instead through the lens of Christ, okay, when we got that lens on, okay, how would the Lord see this situation? How would He want His soldiers, us, in the army of God, how should we perform our duties in this situation? He wants us to go straight towards these events, not turn away from them, not abandon hope, knowing that this is a chance for us to pray for people who are struggling through these events and suffering with these things and to stand up for people who are being killed, people who are being persecuted. And so, just like soldiers are trained to not run away from a battle, but to go into battle, it's the same way that when we have the lens of Christ, we know that we can go into these battles, that the Holy Spirit within us is going to give us strength and boldness and confidence, no matter what the situation is, no matter how grim a situation looks, through that perspective that the world has, we know that we can run into that situation and be fully prepared and confident and bold to handle it through the Holy Spirit that dwells within you. And that's just something that runs so contrary to the world. When we see events like this happening, it's really an awesome opportunity for the church to reach out because people are abandoning their hope, and hope is something that can only be found truly in the Lord. And, and so the scripture they showed me with this one is out of Isaiah 41, and it's verses 10 through 16. And these verses say, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Behold, all who are incensed against you shall be put to shame and confounded. Those who strive against you shall be as nothing and shall perish. You shall seek those who contend with you, but you shall not find them. Those who war against you shall be as nothing at all. For I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, Fear not, I am the one who helps you. Fear not, you worm, you worm Jacob, you men of Israel. I am the one who helps you, declares the Lord. Your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I make of you a threshing sledge, new, sharp, and having teeth. You shall thresh the mountains and crush them, and you shall make the hills like chaff. You shall winnow them, and the wind shall carry them away, and the tempest shall scatter them. And you shall rejoice in the Lord, and the Holy One of Israel you shall glory. So just allowing the Lord to use us, that He can be our confidence, that we can truly be like that threshing sledge, that basically anything that gets in our way, when we're being used by the Holy Spirit, when we have the power and confidence and boldness of the Holy Spirit, that all of that stuff is just going to be crushed and eaten alive, and that's a pretty awesome thing to, to be able to take a stand on. And that totally changes our perspective on events that we're seeing happen. We know that these are the Lord's promises to us. This isn't like the Lord saying, okay, maybe through me you can be powerful sometimes. You know, maybe. This is the Lord saying, when you have my spirit, okay, when you've truly been converted into my likeness, then this, you have this. Okay, this is a promise for us that when events come our way that scare the world, we can stand tall in the Lord and be used by Him for His glory. And he can use us to, to really you know, change the atmosphere in the world and to bring people to hope, bring people into his kingdom. And so that's why even the situations that the world is going into, which, which look pretty grim when you have on that, like the glasses of the world, mm -hmm. seeing through those lenses, everything looks dark, everything looks grim, there's not very much good going on in the world right now. When you watch the news, everything seems dark and it's depressing. But when you put on the lens of Christ, you can see these things as opportunities for us as the body of Christ to step up. You know, we heard the song earlier that we want to be used as a soldier in the army of God. Well, if we really want this, then right now is the perfect time to be alive. Because we can see events happening all over the place where if we really want to step up and be a soldier for God, this is the, this is the time to do it. Like More so than any... I would say any of the previous generations before us, we've got opportunities that take, they take boldness and through the Holy Spirit. We have all of that that we need. And so if we're willing to take a stand, I really believe that God's going to use us in an awesome way. And so where the world sees a hopeless situation, we know that we can always have confidence 
Because we know that through the lens of Christ, no matter what the situation is that we're in, we're already equipped with every weapon we need to rise up against that and to defeat the enemy. To be more than just a conqueror, to, to, to be that through Christ. Just as a soldier goes into battle, and, and if we're thinking of a battle today, a soldier's not going to run in there with like a, a single shot shotgun with like a, a bayonet on the end of it, or like a muzzle loader from the American Revolution. Because if you run in there with that, you'll be shooting maybe like one round, one round every couple minutes, and you won't be very accurate, and you'll just get eaten alive. And so that's the same thing when we don't take advantage of the strength and the power that we have through the Lord. When we try to take on a situation just on our own power, we're like going up against ISIS out there, and we're running into battle with like a toothpick trying to poke them, and it's just going to egg on the enemy, and it's not going to do anything. But when we go into battle with the Lord, with His Spirit, we've got every weapon we possibly need. Okay, He's got like warships behind us, He's got helicopters, He's got... Like radar, he knows where the enemy's at. He's got night vision for us. Okay? We can see through the dark. We can see where other people can't. And so, by having that opportunity, we know that no matter what's coming at us, we can always have confidence in the Lord that no matter what the situation is, we've got the weapons. We're equipped with the weapons that we need to take on any situation. And so when the world looks at that event, they say there's no way that, you know, with, with the Ebola outbreak, there's nothing we can do about it. It's just awful, it's terrible, it's going to kill people, it's dark, it's, you know, it's just something to freak out about for them. But for us, through Christ, we know that we're equipped with weapons where the Lord can use us to fight back against that, to fight back against the evil in the world, and we have those weapons to do that. We just need to open ourselves and be willing and be willing to move and act upon His commands and His orders for us, and we're going to be triumphant in battle, and that's pretty sweet. So I want to read Isaiah 54, 16 and 17 here. Which says, Behold, I have created the smith who blows the fire of coals and produces a weapon for its purpose. I have also created the ravager to destroy. No weapon that is fashioned against you shall succeed, and you shall refute every tongue that rises against you in judgment. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their vindication from me, declares the Lord. So, no weapon that's formed against us is ever going to succeed. But every weapon that's formed for us, that's through the Lord, that we're using by His power, is going to be exactly what we need to take on these situations and to overcome the enemy. And so at this point, when I was getting, when I was writing this stuff down, on the little Chromebook here, the Lord just kind of hit me with a message about just taking up our weapons, and so I wrote it down as quick as I could. So I haven't actually looked through it again since I wrote it down, so I'll look and see what the Lord says here. So the Lord is saying to us, He says, protect what you have been given against the attacks of the enemy, but be ready to use it. So basically, make sure that you protect those weapons that you do proper upkeep, that you like if you're a soldier, you need to. You can't just set your gun down and and leave it there to you know get water on it and get sand in there. You know it's not going to work properly. So to to do proper upkeep on your weapons, be ready to use them, protect them, because the Lord did not give us weapons just to leave them to sit there and let them rust. The Lord is going to need to use those weapons, and we need to be ready for whenever that time is going to come. So the Lord said, stand up, pick up your weapons, and be ready for the fight of your life. A time is coming in which your weapons will be used as never before. To the world, this will be a time of nearly complete darkness. You will be my light. If you keep sitting on your weapons, there are people who will suffer and perish because you are not willing to take a stand for me. I will raise up soldiers that the world would not recognize as soldiers, but through them I will work the greatest of miracles. Those who have been persecuted will rise up in my strength and bring forth my kingdom. My kingdom has already been placed in you. You must lay yourself down and follow me wholeheartedly. Sacrifice any and all things that come between us. There is no longer room for extra baggage on this journey. Lay the weight of your burdens on me, and I will carry it. Stand up, pick up your weapons, sharpen the blades, and go into battle under my command. 
And, and so I really just feel like this is the time. Like if we're going to stand up and be ready to fight, be ready for warfare, the time is right now because we're, we're, we're coming down to it and we know that, that you know, things keep, keep ramping up. And so if we're not taking the chance right now to lay down that extra baggage, like if you're a soldier who's about to go into battle, you don't want to be carrying any extra weight. That's just going to make it that much easier for the enemy to take you down. And so we have to make sure that we lay down everything that's not from the Lord, that's not a weapon that He wants us to be using. Because when I'm running into battle, I want to be you know, just wearing the proper armor that I'm supposed to have, right? Just nice lightweight armor, We're running in, carrying an effective weapon, and knowing what my job is, and, and allowing myself to be used to do that.